Hi guys, and welcome to this week, uh, this week's Q and A. <laughs> For you who are new to uh, my channel, please push the subscribe button if you love the material and if you would like to be updated every time we post something new. There's this ringing bell button. Push it, and uh, every time we have new things to share or subjects or whatever, <laughs> you will be updated. So, without further ado, we will go straight to the Q&A. How do I deal with expectations of others and myself? <laughs> this is a good one. So, expectations, we have to really look into what that means. When we expect something from others, it is often something which is not fulfilled in ourselves. It is a need or agreement that we made with somebody where we are not met. So a way to deal with it on one hand is to ask yourself, what is my expectations and why? Is it because we have our appointment and the other person um, don't come at the, at the time we have agreed upon? Or is it because that I have a need or urge for something to be fulfilled within me that I am putting upon this other person? The way to deal with it is to look inside of yourself, on these, ask yourself these questions um, and start looking into how can I fulfill myself with that need that I was searching within the other person. And if it is about uh, agreement on being at a special time, at a special place, at the same time, um, that will be the moment where you will have to realize your borders. That will be the moment where you have to look into, okay, so do I have to stand up and say, you know what, if we have our agreement on a certain time, I will prefer that we are there or we will cancel. Or uh, is it you? who uh, need to just go with the flow. But all of this is something that happens inside of you. Everything that has something to do with expectations is always your own perception of what is. Therefore, there is no right, there is no wrong, because it's all a matter of where you are in this state within yourself. So, like every other subject, <laughs> you need to take a good look inside of you. People often say that heartbreaks are a gift, but how? So, I explained in some of the earlier videos how that love is what moves us. Love is what makes us go from one place to another. And that not necessarily these love bindings are supposed to last, but just be teachers and showing us stuff for a certain amount of time. What we tend to do is we tend to step into this romantic kind of I got my heart broken, he broke it forever! <laughs> and it kind of loses ourselves in that aspect. But the truth is that if you really want to move, the first part is when you move out of where you were to into this thing with this other person. Creation, magic and you step so much out of yourself that you probably are gonna cross a lot of your own boundaries, right? Because you want this so badly. So if you, for whatever reason, is no longer a vibrationally match and you will split up, then this is not against you at all. This is just universal law. If you're not a match, it's better you're not together. And then what you will find out on the other side is that if you were not a match, one of you guys had suppressed some of your feelings, some of your boundaries, some of your personality, this is how I am. And in this breaking up period, this is your moment to re-realize that part of yourself, to re-realize what you may have given up that you were not ready for, or that wasn't part of who you are in this now. So you can reintegrate it, and you can be a vibrational limit to something or someone else. How do I get over a broken heart? <laughs> like this. So, <laughs> so it, it is really, of course you have to allow your emotions. When you are deep connected with someone uh, and you are then separated, it does feel like for some people like losing a part of themselves. 
So give yourself time to do the grieving and the crying and the maybe anger, depending on what triggered what. But after that, look behind it. Look into what I, I just mentioned about the lessons within it. Look into what you truly desire in life and uh, what is a part of you in your being in this moment. To get over a heartbreak is to know that no matter where your heart ever went, you are always whole because you are your heart. The pieces we give away to people is not necessarily that we don't keep it for ourselves. It is just showing and sharing love. It doesn't have to ruin our lives. On the contradictory, actually, it often makes us feel alive again because we are in some kind of bubble and, <laughs> and when we then step out of the bubble, we need to relearn how to live. We need to relearn how to grow. We need to rethink what we feel and we want to be a part of. So it gives us this new opportunity to experience life in a different form. Shifting our heartbreak into something positive. <laughs> How are other planet systems dealing with what the Earth is doing or going through at the moment? <laughs> I love this question! <laughs> um, so it really depends where, where, which dimension we are talking with, but I will try to just tune into some sort of collective... Um, What is going on on planet Earth right now is a part of the plan. It has been a part of the shift. We knew that this was happening. Actually, we had predicted it to happen earlier. As in time doesn't exist, but they look at the energetic matches when it will fall out. But, um, but, <laughs> but if you look at it from this perception and perspective, everything is going in the divine order. But the choices of the the choices that the people are to make in this new creation in this time is what will influence the outcome which will also have an influence on this planet system when you're out of this planet system and you're in the other planet system they don't care about earth in that perception earth was an experience and in that experience if we live or die does not influence their part of the universe but in this planet system where all the planets are part of each other and every single movement and and, <laughs> and the water balance on the moon and etc. Not on the moon, but our water balance are influenced by the moon and etc. We are all one, so we are part of this and the experiment planet Earth is a part of that movement. So they, we, are all influenced uh, by the changes there is going on. We can turn it around when we are making differences on our planets, when we are moving closer to Earth. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Do you know that something is changing? It is exactly the same thing the other way around. Okay. <laughs> I have heard that the astrological star signs are now moving days because of a solar cluster. Does that mean I have a different star sign? <laughs> Yes, you are all uh, horses now. No, <laughs> sorry, I will of course take this serious. It is, as we were, it's, I love this. They're sort of kind of connected, all of it. Um, it is as if, as if I just told you, everybody is influenced by each other in this planet system, which means that when the moon comes closer to the earth, the, the pressure of the water, it changes and therefore the pressure in our body changes because we are 70% of water, 73, sorry. So, um, so we are of course influenced, influenced <laughs> by the changes in the whole, in the whole galaxy, in our whole planet system. Um, does it mean that my star sign changes? Yes and no, not necessarily because your blue imprint had the color that it had when you incarnated and you have to go through the things that you were told to. But this shift that is going on in this moment 
as a collective is a massive shift. That means that a lot of people have the opportunity for awakening in a new way, in a new form, which means that these star signs predictions that was written in stones a few hundred years ago are no longer written in stones. You can use it as guidelines, but it doesn't define you fully because we are now stepping into a new time where we are so conscious that we know that we can shift <laughs> like this. And that opens a lot of new doors. That opens a door of knowing the law of attraction. That opens the door of knowing that everything is possible if you fully feel it in your heart. Um, and it helps us to move from these very set structures into a more floating part of a whole. When that is being said, it does not mean that we no longer have personality or we no longer are supposed to be the color of a blue imprint, because of course we are, but it just simply means that we were incarnated in this time to witness and be part of this shift. So we knew this part already. So whatever was written in stone until this day were supposed to change from this day and forward. Why do I have to take care of my body when essentially I am my soul? So, I love this one so much. Take this from a person who... I love moving my body a lot. I, I guess people who know me, they know. And I wanted to experience every single second of movement in life. So when I was a kid, I couldn't sit still at all. I didn't dare to visit people because we had to sit down and talk. I thought, we we'll have a body, we gotta move it, you know? So I would just be walking around, running around, dancing around all day long. And when I was sleeping, I was lying with my feet like this, super impatient because I just wanted to wake up, just wanted to move because we had this body. I just wanted to move it. Oh my God. So <laughs> um, that, of course, is not in balance. But why do we have to take care of this body when we are here? You are having a human experience. You chose to become part of this reality. And in this reality, there is a lot of hard stuff, I know, but there is so much beauty to gain. Your soul is ever knowing. Well, not ever knowing. It depends where your soul stream comes from and blah, blah, blah. But you are linked to this connected consciousness. So you are all knowing in this planetary, right? But on Earth, you tend to forget these things. On Earth, you are here to integrate it in part of the game of the human experience. The human experience is not only the mind. The human experience is the six senses for a human, sorry, the five senses plus the six later on, that you can really feel a sensations within this body. This way of experience life form we do not have in many planet systems. We do not have on many planets. And exactly in the shape that you feel it on Earth, it's only one other place that you can feel it. So why we have to take care of our body? One second. We have the... It's because we don't want to end up in the hospital. <laughs> so why we want take care of the body it's that we will love to have the most beneficial experience of life right we love to feel the benefits and the fun and experience of having a body when we doesn't take care of it the body become a map of us not taking care of ourselves our feelings and the part of consciousness that lies within the generations of cells that lies within our body systems that means you are not only you, you are you, you are all your ancestors, you are all the vibration that runs through your DNA. So your soul is here to connect with each little cell within this body system, listen to each other, become one and experience life. When we don't do this, when we do neglect our feelings, when we don't listen to whatever parts of the body they still want to talk from its past, it's not all body systems there still does it, but a big amount does. Then we become ill. And when we become ill, human life is a much heavier game to play. When we become sick and have these uh, 
diseases, human lives are a lot harder to experience. And there is, of course, beauty within this experience, for sure, that it's in every single part of life is beauty. It doesn't matter if it's heavy or light, it has beauty in it. But on Earth, that kind of experience on a longer term, it is nice. And at a certain point, your soul system say, well, you're not a vibrational match to continue your journey on Earth because you don't, you don't involve any longer and we tap out. And then you leave planet Earth. So I guess that was my very long, long answer to your question. And I hope that this brought you something and everybody else who are listening to it. So please let us know in the comment below. We are really curious uh, how it makes you feel. Uh, the next one is a really <laughs> funny question, but very interesting at the same time. I, love I have to say, expression. <laughs> I have to say, I'm sorry. So when I am on the toilet, are there <laughs> dead people looking at me? Since all exists at the same time. <laughs> Shoot! I love this. <laughs> <clears throat> yes and no. <laughs> so like, let me uh, just tap out of me and tap into another way of explaining. Uh, we are curious about human life. We are curious about the process which is going on here. What we are curious in is in the emotional development. It is in the what drives them, what makes them do what they do and how they want to interact. What you do on the toilet is not necessarily where we are putting our focus. It doesn't mean... <laughs> Don't <Sorry. make> me... <laughs> it doesn't mean that we are not there, but because we are. And uh, we are one, we are everywhere at the same time. So all the angels, if you wanted them to, they will be lined up at the toilet while you're going hard. But their focus will be on the emotional level. It will be on helping you on the thought and emotional level where you're asking their help. So they don't care what you are doing on the toilet. They don't feel it. They don't see it as good or bad. They cannot judge it. So it doesn't really matter what you're doing in that form. Um, so this will be the answer. Serious answer to your question. Thank you so much. I love this one. <laughs> When everything is an illusion and we don't really die, why do I have to care about this life? Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I can hear these, uh, they call it the white brotherhood. So it's, I sort of kind of see them as school teachers, you know? So I can see them standing like, young boy <laughs> or girl, you chose this life. You chose you wanted to be a part of this incarnation. You chose that you wanted to play this game and integrate whatever role that you have to help the universe see which outcomes uh, can be and will be created. You have to care because essentially you do. <laughs> so even that you are in a state of uh, disattached to your um, deeper wish or meaning in this life and with this life it doesn't necessarily mean that you do not care one second okay. and it just means that you are at the moment not connected to the part of you that care so what you can do is you can look into what is it that I am afraid of feeling before coming to the part where I understand why I don't want to be a part of this world in this time being. Is it a sin to masturbate? I love you guys so, so much. You make my life so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one too. Would, would, would you uh, close the window just fast? Yes. Um, is it a sin to masturbate? Ooh, I can really come with a long explanation on this one. A really long one. So I have to look into how to narrow it down. Well, no, it's not a sin. <laughs> but, um, so what is masturbation, right? 
it is a physical thing you do with your body where you are stimulating certain centers that make your if you do it right it makes your kundalini energy energy rise so you feel this deep deep feeling of light and openness and excitement at the same time so you reach a certain state of um well some would call it bliss some would call it love and some would call it relaxation it doesn't really mean matter what you call it but you reach a certain place of a second of freedom a second of surrendering a second of nothing else in the world matter instead of this <sighs> So what happens is that your mind keeps searching this state because this state of freedom is something you want to integrate in your life. And for some people who have not learned to find this in any different form, will keep searching this state over and over again. That is one of the reasons why some people are addicted to it. <laughs> um, but it doesn't make it more or less wrong than anything else. So it is a natural thing for human beings to search for the state of love in no matter which form, to search for the state of freedom and liberation. It is within us to go for that. And therefore, um, a shortcut for many people are the sexuality in that way through. The thing is that because of all the traumas and etc. that has been going on also for generations, this can be out of balance. And when it is out of balance, it does not only bring beauty for some people, it also brings a lot of struggles, a lot of hurt, a lot of traumas and etc. When we look into the religion ways of looking at masturbation, <laughs> and they say that it is it's a sin, that we tap into the perception of why that was said in that time frame. We wanted to show the humanity how they could recreate freedom within. We wanted to show them how they could create uh, utopia and a feeling of purity. When we saw the way that these connections was used, we realized we needed to bring upon a rule <laughs> to take them away from the ways there were uh, um, blinding them instead of uh, letting them go the path of their heart. Uh, they say that in the Bible, they say it in the Quran, they say it also in the Hinduism, I think. Um, so it is like making rules for your kids to not burn their fingers. And yet when you tell your kids not to burn their fingers, kids go burn their fingers. And that was what they figured out later later in the process because if you have an urge or a need and you suppress it it doesn't it doesn't disappear but at that time where the books were dropped <laughs> we did not know that so we were just simply trying to make sure that you will feel good and safe okay i think that's that's it no there are two more questions okay let's do the last yeah. two. Uh, do you think it is possible to recover from sexual abuse? If so, how? I know it's possible. So for... Um, what I always like to look at is when we come to the realization that we have more than one life, right? We can look into, we can tap into all the things we've been through. How many times do you think you were killed? How many times do you think you were raped? How many times do you think that you hit somebody else? You have lived so many different roles. And for me who live all my life at once, I remember it and I feel this. <laughs> but what I came to learn on each incarnation is that nothing of that is defining the light that I am. And nothing of that is breaking down the light that I am. It's purely experience for that moment that needs to be seen, heard, cried out, being angry, whatever needed to express it, 
experience it and go through it. Go back to knowing that you are always pure in your heart. You are always that light, no matter what anyone ever did to you. It is not changing your internal self at all. What will take some time to get over and what you do need to work with is your body memory. Your body were in a state of shock probably. So there's a lot of tensions, there's a lot of energies that you're responding upon when you meet along your journey. And you have to relearn your body that everything is okay. Some people who have been through sexual abuse uh, have like either they completely step away from sexuality or they step so much into it that they think that the only way of, of, of um, feeling loved is to let themselves be sexual abused. That, that's kind of the pattern, right? None of these two is in balance. But it is a part, it's about <laughs> seeing that pattern within yourself, understanding why you created that pattern, be okay with that creation. And, um, and show yourself love and care for that. And then work on changing it. We cannot change anything until we allowed it. So that means if you need to go through a period, I went through a period like that. I went through a period where I thought, I don't, I, I, I'm just gonna be a guy, you know? So I trained myself so fit <laughs> that I basically looked like a guy. Well, for my own perception anyways. So it is, you need to go through what you have to go through in order of getting to where you need to go. And I know that people is gonna hate me for saying this, but take it for somebody who's been there myself, right? So I have been through it, sexual abuse. And <laughs> we choose to have these experiences. Not because we want to have pain, not because we wish for a, a shitty life, but really truly because that the experience of how deep you get within yourself when you go through it, not through the episode, but through the inner work afterwards, it defines you and it makes you so much stronger. And you wouldn't have gone to those kind of depths within yourself if you haven't been through shit. So to have shit in the start of your life, honestly, on the deepest level, is a blessing. Because it helps you to grow in a different way. It pushes you to grow. Last thing I wanna to add to this question is that we, of course, need to react and respond and whatever on these kind of people. But we need to read the part where we forgive them doesn't mean that you should have them as part in your life, none at all. <laughs> but it means that in order of setting yourself free, you need to forgive them. And when that is done, you need to forgive you. And the moment that you truly have forgiven yourself is the moment where you realize that there is nothing to forgive. Okay, guys. The last question we're going to save for next week. I just want to say thank you so much for watching along. And again, if you have any questions you would like answered or any comments, uh, please let us know. Write an email or comment in the comments below. I love you all. We love you all. Namaste.